Hi, Lar. Hey, Katie. What's up? Not much. Just chilling on the Dion Green, reading Heidegger. Oh, uh, yes. The life. Oh, right. I know. I was thinking about what truth means for Heidegger. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously a term he uses a lot throughout his work, and you know, therefore we should kind of pinpoint what that means. For him, we can look at it in two ways, as eletheoe or correctness. Heidegger favors eletheoe, which is cool. It's basically meaning recollection or showing of being. But every showing of being is also a concealment. We encounter a truth that is revealed to us, but is never the whole truth. There's always some side that's being hidden. So like if I look at my ring, I see the green gem, the gold band reaching over the side, but I don't see the inscription that's on the inside. That's how I like try to think of it as Alice Away and concealment. Um, now, if you contrast all this with what we usually think of truth, truth as correctness, it's kind of interesting. Like we usually say a true statement is that which we could verify, that which is not false. But for Heidegger, Sure, correct statements can be true, but it's a subpar way to define truth. A correct statement itself is always located in this network of significance that points towards Alethewe being the better understanding of truth. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean with the correctness and the network, networks of significance, I think. So tell me if this make, example makes sense. My mom, sister, and I can all agree that my dad desperately needs a haircut because his hair just looks crazy. With this quarantine and all, he's not able to go to a hairdresser and he just won't let my mom cut his hair. Mm -hmm. So he needs a haircut. And my mom, sister, and I all believe this statement, my dad or Brian for my mom, needs a haircut to be true and correct. If other people saw my dad, I think they would think the same thing. But what you're saying is, although we see this statement as correct, the statement has more meaning and connections to it besides that my da dad's hair looks crazy. Such as, who is my dad? Who is my family? What does it mean for someone's hair to look crazy and what state of hair warrants for a haircut? No, that's exactly it. That's what I was thinking. Cool. Um, and for Heidegger too, he also is clarifying that truth is many truths, but not an infinite number. Nietzsche would have said that there's no truth or there's an infinite truth because infinite truth is basically the same thing as suggesting there is none. So for Heidegger, there are many truths and the world itself is polyvalent. It's totally saturated with meaning. Yeah. So because Heidegger thinks there are many truths, there's also something to consider that he also says that all truths are equally valid. A lot of the time you can find that many people only believe in science truths, or at least believe that science truths are more valid than other truths and believe in them more than other truths. The world tends to focus on science as some sort of ultimate truth or something like that. It would be absurd to see only truth in only something that can be manipulated. When we reduce meanings to one or use scientific reductionism, this limits the amount of truths that we can disclose. Yeah, definitely. Like science has us hyper-focused on this idea of mastery and it's hard to escape. We live in a world that's so techno technology obsessed, science oriented, but I try to think of Edith Stein and how she would use empathy in this way of accessing something true about another person. That's a paradigm that totally does not involve manipulation, control variables, correlation versus causation, all the stuff that science believes, makes us believe that we need in order for something to be true. So I definitely think we need to overcome this idea that there's only one true interpretation. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I like that Edith Stein example. Also, I was thinking that Heidegger sees truth as a disclosure of meaning, which suggests that we do not encounter things, but we encounter the meaning of things. As we go through our lives and the world we live in, we see the meaning of things rather than just the thing. Definitely, yeah. Like I think about when I walk my dog, Darcy, and I have the leash. I'm not encountering the leash as what it is, this purple contraption. I'm thinking about keeping my dog off the road, you know, keeping her from chasing bun buns, stuff like that. So that's how I'm encountering the leash is the meaning and the utility that it has in my life, not as the thing itself. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's also too why art matters a lot for Heidegger because mm. it's a really good way of escaping this idea that science is pointing towards this one and only truth. Art embraces the idea of adding more truths to reality because... Yeah, and Heidegger sees that even though art is a 